two major changes this year is the format for the Bass Pro Tour has switched up to a five fish limit. So we're only scoring the five biggest fish each day. And the other thing is, it's 2023 will be my last season on tour. This was a really hard decision. It's all I've ever known. It's all that my family's ever known. My boys grew up with me being on tour. Sherry and I were dating before I was a full-time professional. This is our whole lifestyle. Competitive fishing, it's like an addiction for most of us that do it. It's hard to stop. And there's no doubt that, you know, when next season rolls around, I'll be thinking about it. But I'm just really at a good place in my life and my career to move forward. And again, to, to move on to that next phase. So I'm excited, nervous, scared, and happy all at the same time. It's just a lot of different emotions. Yeah, so it's the first day of my last season here on the Bass Pro Tour, you know? It's a little, I'm a little emotional. I know you're gonna get a live 25 time Bassmaster winner. Recently announced this will be his last year of competitive fishing from Kalamazoo, Michigan, KVD, Kevin Van Dam. The GOAT, the greatest of all time, a seven time Bassmaster Angler of the Year, four time classic champion, and multi time Major League Fishing Cup champion. Well, let's give it up for Kevin Van Dam! Cause I can run, but I can't hide the feelings that I know. I can't keep bottled up inside. And all I want to know is, are you ready for the ride? What have I been waiting for? Oh, I can run, but I And so many times I've done this, and fortunately for once this time, I mean, it's cold, we've got snow on the ground, but gosh, I'm usually trying to fight a storm or trying to get ahead of a storm for that first tournament of the year, and uh, you've got decent weather, so maybe that's a sign of good things to come. First tournament of the year, just getting on the road, you know, beginning of a new year, and it's definitely gonna be a different one. This is gonna be my last season on tour, and it's, man, it's weird. I mean, it's weird to me this morning, it's bittersweet. Uh, definitely gonna be an emotional year for me, but man, it's it's time. I've been doing this 32 years. This is my 33rd season that I'm about to kick off, and uh, you know, hopefully, it's gonna be a real good one. So I'm super excited, but uh, you know, I'm anxious as well. So it's gonna be fun. We're gonna follow the whole season all year long. Kings of Bass, let's roll. If you've watched it with a lot of different athletes, you know there's gonna be an end to everybody's career. And I'm not retiring, but you know, 32 years on tour, I've accomplished a lot, won a lot of championships, a lot of titles, won a lot of tournaments. And I've just come to that place in my life that I'm ready for a change. I'm ready for the next phase. And I'm a workaholic, I'm busy. I like to do a lot of things, and, and that's really what I want to focus on is being a great ambassador for fishing, for conservation, for the next generation, and you know have a little more flexibility with that schedule as well. Man, big year, 33rd season. Excited to be kicking off here at Lake Toho in the Kissimmee chain. A lot of history here, a lot of big news this year. So it's gonna be exciting, man. So fired up to be down here. You know, over my career, starting the season in Florida was always a tradition. You know, I mean, uh, it's the one place you can come to where it's not gonna be snowy and icy. And really, this is the first trip that I've made leaving home in quite a few years where I haven't been dodging a snowstorm, an ice storm, something like that. So we had smooth sailing all the way down here. We got 80 degree temps when you show up in Florida. I got shorts on, flip flops. It's February, this isn't normal. So I'm excited to be back kind of doing what we used to do a long time ago. So this year's a little different. You know, I had plenty of time at home in the shop. I got, I got 36 rods in the box right here, ready to go, rigged for practice. You know, for the long ride down here, I wrap them up in towels, so it's pretty, kind of pretty cool. This is a towel 
that my boys have had since they, when they were little. So this is Nicholas and Jackson. So I carry these with me. I've carried these for years and years on the road, use them for boat towels and things like that. But again, just kind of keeping, when you got that many rods and reels in there together, keeps them from kind of banging against each other. And you know, I might be a little sentimental about some stuff. Life on tour is definitely no easy lifestyle. You know, it's a lot of motels, time on the road, traveling to all the events where the schedule is set for you. You know, I mean, when the season is announced and those dates are in the calendar, you can't miss one. So that means a lot of sacrifices for your family. And over the years, you know, my wife, my boys, my family, they have definitely sacrificed a lot for me and for my career. So they've given up a lot and I thank them you know, from the bottom of my heart, it's, uh, I love what I do. I have a passion for it, but it's definitely not an easy lifestyle. Day one here at the Kissimmee Chain for the Bass Pro Tour event. First event of the season. It's 30 minutes right before sunrise. That's when we're allowed to get out. So we're gonna get out there, try to try to break this lake down, see how it's changed. I've got a ton of history here. Been here so many times over the years. Early in the year like this in January and February. It's all about the grass here. It changes a lot from year to year. So we're gonna go out there and start breaking it down. Got two days to do it. You know, I'm going into this season really no different than any other. You know, I'm, I'm putting the work in. I, I want to win. I want to contend for championships. You know, you want to qualify for the next Red Crest. All of those things are, are still on the table. But along the way, I want to enjoy it too. I'm going to kind of sit back and appreciate those sunrises and sunsets and, and just really take it all in. You know, I want to have fun this year and I'm going to do that. You know, today I'm, I'm just really focused on trying to figure out what stages the fish are in and find a good area. You know, in Florida, it's all about areas. You know, there's hydrilla, there's lily pad fields like this. The fish are, you know, spawning. Uh, they're going to be in all three stages. So I really want to cover a lot of area. I'm going to check several different lakes, several of the lakes today, and just cover a lot of water and try to find an area that you can settle down and, and just grind it out. Just trying to find areas that just look lively and that have the potential because in Florida, it's all about being in the right area and you can cover a lot of dead water to find that zone that the fish are really using at that time, especially, you know, as much offshore grass as there is here. It's like finding a needle in a hay field. The Kissimmee chain is, you know, it's a storied place. I was in the event where Dean Rojas set the all time five fish record. I fished that tournament. I've seen it at its best and at its worst. And, you know, a couple years ago we were here for heavy hitters and it just really showed me how many big fish are in this system. These guys are the best of the best and always somebody's going to figure it out. Toho has got a lot of offshore grass, lots and lots. You know, it's it's different than Kissimmee, that Kissimmee has mostly, you know, grass around the shore and, and not a lot of hydrilla. Toho has a lot more hydrilla and eelgrass and peppergrass. And, you know, this massive flat right here, there's definitely some fish here. There's always, they're always here. I won an elite event here back in the day in this same area out here, you know, but it changes every year. The fish move around and, but you know, you got to find it. And this is a pretty good looking little area that I'm in right here. It's got a little bit better grass and that's what you got to do is just find the, the section that they're in. There's four or five other boats out here as well where it's, it's a known area. Not a big one, but a nice one. Just, it's so random out here. That's why you gotta fish the stuff that, that you can cover a ton of grass and a ton of water with. 
this scattered hydrilla like this is perfect for a red eye. You know, if it gets real windy or something like that, it just gets hard to fish slow and flip, th do things like that. So out here I can throw a thunder cricket and a red eye shad, a square bill, spinner bait, still be efficient. Good one. Well, that's a kind right there. That's solid three, three plus. A lot of grass out here and the water's, you know, nice and good and clear. There's another one. Look at that grass. Jerk bait's always been one of my favorites. You know, you just, it makes them react to it. You can, a lot of people throw thunder crickets and they swim worms and stuff because it's easy to fish through all this grass and you can catch them on all that and the thunder cricket catches big ones, but <laughs> I've caught great big ones jerking out here too. They just, they can't handle it. That last heavy hitters, I caught a biggest fish of the tournament I caught a eight pounder on, that I caught on a, on a jerk bait. I saw him on my Mega 360 and fired over there and boy, when he bit and jumped out of the water, it shocked me. You know, this year with the change in the format going back to five fish, just scoring five, it's a whole different mentality now. You know, we're you know really focused on trying to target biggest ones. You know, you only you only need a handful of bites. So in reality, it's it's a lot easier. You know, it's going to change your tactics, your techniques, your locations. Not that big ones always haven't mattered because they have, but now it doesn't matter if you catch 43 pounders. You know, if you can if you can catch five five pounders, you're you're going to be way ahead. You're going to see a lot of swim baits and glide baits and things show up this year that we didn't see on the Bass Pro Tour. And that's my whole thinking down here too, is you know, it's just, you've got to put yourself in the areas that have big fish potential. And it's all about finding those small little sections where those fish have moved into. up there spawning male got to find those females but covered three lakes now or I'm in the third lake and just trying to find an area that just I feel good about I've, I've seen some stuff that has a lot of potential for sure and there's a lot of vast areas of grass but it's just like hunting a needle in a hay field you know, you got to get enough bites in an area that I know that I can hunker down and grind out a good bag in, and that's that's what I'm looking for. That's what you got to find in a place like this that has so much cover. The one-legged rage craw, that ain't no good. Saw a little one. Female, too. Two pounder. Staple in Florida. What I love about a cutter worm is you can swim it, you can flip it, you you know, you can just do about everything with it, so good bait. There's one. There's definitely a group of fish here spawning. Look how fat that one is right there. You know, when you start seeing these isolated reeds like this, and it's not a big one, but conditions are right. I mean, they're gonna get in here and get in this kind of stuff. I've had three bites in the last little bit right here on this stretch, so. You get in an area that you're getting a lot of males and you're definitely gonna get some females. I mean, there's some great mats and stuff to flip around here. But these conditions, they should be biting just anyways. Good one. There's a nice one. Females. Oh, no, that's a male. Look at here. Nice one. We haven't caught any big ones, but you know, we've caught a handful of nice ones, and there's definitely a bunch of fish in this area. And it sets up nice because it's got a lot of scattered cover. So just need to keep uh expanding on these patterns. 
Well, day one of practice is a wrap. Man, I covered a lot of water. It was pretty slow overall. You know, I, I found a couple areas that got a few fish. Didn't catch any great big ones. Caught some nice ones though. So I got something to build on though. You know, it's, it's the same things that I've seen in the past. And the one thing I know about Florida is, is you have to fish in the right area that's got fish. And hopefully I can find, you know, one or two more good areas that will get better later in the week. So not the best day, not the worst. So today is actually the first day of the tournament, the Best Pro Tour event down here at Toho. You know, the first group is fishing and boy, I'm sure glad that tomorrow is my first day. So I'm in group B and I mean, yesterday, the wind blew sustained 35 with gusts of 50 and it really shredded the water. I mean, it's cool this morning. You know, it was 50 degrees first thing this morning. The sun's shining now and the wind has laid down a good bit, but um, it's definitely going to change things. You know, the practice that I had really yesterday was a, a wash because it was so windy you physically couldn't hardly fish at all and it turned the water up so much that it messed up a lot of areas so it's really going to change things a lot today's you know the day that i'm making my announcement to and you know that's going to come about lunchtime so i'm very nervous i'm scared happy excited and worried all at the same time so definitely a stressful day you know i'm going to go through and get all my all my tackle rigged i've got again i'm still fishing tournaments and fishing this all this season and I've got a lot of history here so i'm just really got all these things going through my mind at once so no doubt it's a distraction but i really want to do well in the tournament you know after practice you know, I found a few areas where I got some bites. I've got, you know, some offshore fish that I'm gonna throw some crankbaits and things for. It seems like the hybrid hunter is gonna be the, the bait of choice for me for that. I mean, that is such a unique bait. I've got some square bills tied on. I've got multiple of these, of the hybrid hunters as well. And that's normal here. You know, you need something that you can fish through the grass. I've got, you know, this blue craw colored one and the shallow version. I mean, the grass is so tall and thick. The way this bait runs in those areas where it's real tall like that, I can run that hybrid hunter over the top of it where a square bill just kind of digs in or even a thunder cricket is hard to fish in it. The grass is so thick where this thing just kind of comes right across the top of it and uh, makes a lot of noise. It's got a good rattle to it. And I got quite a few bites on it yesterday and all that wind. The only thing I caught any bass on was a hybrid hunter. So, so I've got that pattern. I also got a couple of areas where the fish are on some scattered pads and toolies and things. And, you know, I'm going to mix it up there. I'm going to throw a thunder cricket and a swim jig and do some flipping, just basically adapt to the conditions that we have out there on the water. So, you know, we're in between a moon, a lot of different things going on, but we do have improving conditions from this point forward for the rest of the week. So. It's gonna be about making the right adjustments on the fly and uh, covering enough water. So once you get in an area where you start getting bit, man, that's where you need to hunker down and grind it out. When I started my career, I never got into it thinking that I was gonna win a lot of titles and championships, but I just didn't know any better. I got into it because I loved it. I loved the competition and I just started rolling and you just never really thought about it. And that's not why I compete is for the money or for the titles or the accolades. I do it just because I just, I love the competition. And over the years, you know, I've been really fortunate to have a ton of success and win a lot, but it's never like, hey, I, I've got to do this or set a goal to say, hey, I need to win another tournament or another championship. You know, every year you go out there thinking, hey, I want to be in contention for Angler of the Year. I want to win the Classic. I want to win Red Crest. I want to win a Bass Pro Tour event, whatever it is. It's you always want to focus 
on what's right in front of you. And that's just what I've always done. And, you know, 32 years later, you look back and, uh, you know, it's been pretty special. Yeah, so it's the first day of my last season here on the Bass Pro Tour. You know, it's a little, I'm a little emotional. So I knew it'd be, uh, it'd be hard, but man, this is what I love to do. And, uh, and I'm just excited to, to get out there, you know. Uh, this is a place I've got a lot of history all season long. You know, I'm sure it's going to be emotional. I'm going to I'm going to work as hard as I've ever done this season and uh, hopefully have a you know have a great year. But you know, today I'm really focused on trying to figure out what these fish have changed from practice. I mean, we had that big wind, and to me, the best part about tournament fishing or why I love it so much is it's figuring out the puzzle. And uh, this one, Mother Nature has definitely thrown us a big curveball and. So we're gonna go have some fun and see what we can't put together. We got a camera guy with us today too as well and we'll be documenting that. So hopefully we can get off to a good start. Recently announced this will be his last year of competitive fishing. The GOAT, the greatest of all time, a seven time Bassmaster Angler of the Year, four time Classic Champion and multi-time Major League Fishing Cup Champion. Well, let's give it up for Kevin Van Dam. So that is not how I wanted my first day of the last year of my season to go for sure. I mean, wow, just a really tough, you know, start. You know, I went to my first area and I saw the water temperature had really dropped and, you know, I still got a few bites, but just some of those smaller males caught some non-scorables and there were so many fish in there, it really, I thought they would, they would come back and uh, just so much changed with all that wind and practice and really muddied a lot of the water. I kept kept moving, kept searching, and it just never really was uh, able to get anything going real good. You know, I caught two back-to-back -back in, in the third period and, and thought I could really make that work and then could never get another scoreable out of that out of that area. So the, lint, the wind just laid down and just one of those deals. So, you know, the water is real dirty in a lot of places from all that wind. and. I just didn't have the right areas and I didn't make the right adjustments. So over my career, I've had a handful of days like that. And the most important thing when you have a real bad day like that is just to forget about it. You know, I'm going to use what I learned today for my next round for sure, but I'm not going to you know, dwell on it. You know, you got to keep a positive attitude. You got to keep focus. The great thing about this fishery is there's a lot of big ones here. You know, I can make a comeback and that's really, you know, what I've got to focus on is to go out and have the best day that I can. You know, when you have a bad, you know, start like that, you just got to work hard to come out with the best finish that you possibly can. So that's what I'm thinking of for the end game for the whole season. We'll regroup, get refocused tomorrow, and, you know, the conditions should be getting a little bit better as the week goes on and things may turn right around. So you got to keep that positive attitude.
So it's my second day here at Lake Kissimmee and the first day was just atrocious. You know, not the way you want to start uh, the first event of the year and especially the first event of my last season on tour. So uh, it was just one of those days where, uh, man, I could not get anything to work right. I know I dug myself a, a deep hole, but this is a place that has the potential to catch big ones. So I'm gonna change my rotation up a little bit. I've got a great attitude to spend a lot of time yesterday kind of regrouping. After you have a bad day like that, it's important just to use it to your advantage, but forget about it. So today's a new day. I've got a great attitude. I'm going out there and knowing I got to catch a big bag today to do it. And you know, every point matters in the Angler of the Year race. So going out there and uh, turning this around and having a good day is gonna be really important. I'm pretty upset, I'm mad after the first day. And you know, I want a little bit of, of revenge. You know, Today should be a whole lot better. I like the conditions. Uh, things have you know really gotten a lot more stable and I'm gonna go out there and give it everything I got. Our next angler out is from Kalamazoo, Michigan. He finished fifth in Angler of the Year points. He's a multi-time cup champion. Let's give it up for one of the greatest in the sport, KVD Kevin Van Dam. So my second day on the water ended up being quite a bit better and just came up a little bit short. You know, I knew I had a big mountain to climb to make the knockout round, but uh, you know, in this place, anything can happen. And you know, when I finally figured it out, got into an area and I hooked about a three pounder and he, he came off at the boat and I'm like, gosh, dang. And just shortly thereafter, I caught a seven and a half pounder and I'm like, oh, here we go. And I knew then, that I was on the right pattern and doing the right thing. And, you know, caught some more, caught another six pounder, caught a bunch of fish there and just really came close. I mean, I just should have made that adjustment just a little quicker. You know, it's easy to say after the fact, but that's the way that it goes. But anyways, I was able to gain some, some good points back and at least salvage a decent finish out of, out of the deal anyways. I ended up basically just using a Greg Hackney Signature Series flipping stick, his 7-Eleven with a Super Duty Lose Reel, 65 pound braid, three quarter ounce hack attack jig with a Rage Craw on it, and just old school flipping, you know, I'm just flipping cattails and reeds and lily pads, just, you know, unfortunately in that real heavy cover, you're gonna lose a few. So I had the opportunities to, to do it, and, and I think the quality is there to, to be it, you know, to have a chance to have won this thing, but it's just one of those things that had such a bad first day, I just couldn't overcome it. But I appreciate all the fan support. You know, when I made the announcement, I got a ton of calls, texts, a lot of well wishes, things like that. And, you know, I'm gonna have a lot of fun this year. This is one that, Gosh, I sure wish uh, I had to do over, but I can say that a lot of times in my career. And, but uh, you know, all in all, it's nice to be sitting here in Florida with sunshine and shorts. Now I'm headed back north, got to stop in Nashville on the way, go to the National Wild Turkey Federation convention, and then get ready for Red Crest. So on to the next one.